Hello everybody and welcome to Henry's Kitchen. Testing, can you hear me okay? Um, okay, well uh, I'm going to say Happy Mother's Day. Here in America we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, which is to celebrate uh, your mother, or if you're a mother, then celebrate yourself. Um, the recipe that I've decided to do uh, today is uh, peanut butter cookies. And it's not only a celebration for Mother's Day, but we're also going to be celebrating the life of George Washington Carver, who was an American agricultural extension educator. Um, not sure what that is, but uh, from Alabama's Tuskegee Institute. The, well, the most well-known promoter of the peanut as a replacement for the cotton crop. And um, the cotton crop had been heavily damaged by the boll weevil. Uh, this is George Washington Carver, not to be uh, confused with the president, George Jimmy Carter. Um, but uh, I got this from Wikipedia, so if you want to learn more about that, you certainly can. Uh, but it's a delicious recipe and we're going to get started right now. I, I will say this is a very complicated recipe, so please bear with me. I'm going to do the best that I can uh, to make this go smoothly. First thing and foremost, uh, you're going to want to preheat the oven. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that I've tried to uh, make cookies and then I forgot to preheat the oven and so then you're just sitting there killing time for a half hour while it preheats. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to be following a recipe for this. This is my grandmother's recipe. But uh, it doesn't look like she said how hot the oven's supposed to be. Thanks, Grandma. Idiot. Um, but I'm going to assume it's 400 degrees because that's usually what uh, most things are. So there might be a little bit of experimenting here, but I've got that preheating. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Hi and welcome. Sorry about that. Do you guys hear me okay? Hello? Okay. Okay, great, so, um, all right, so I've got two bowls here, which you can see are just two regular ordinary bowls. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call one of them our wet bowl, and one of them's gonna be our dry bowl. And this is very important, and you don't wanna mix this up. Um, you don't wanna combine wet ingredients with uh, dry ingredients unless you do it properly, and doing that uh, and knowing when to do it uh, takes a great amount of time. So just uh, be careful with this part of it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by uh, emptying out um, one full cup of peanut butter. I've got our peanut butter here. I think I poured about one cup in there anyway. But you want one cup of peanut butter in your wet ingredient bowl. And then next up, um, we're going to add... Uh, we have a question about whether peanut butter is wet or dry. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm gonna go with wet because it's got uh, sort of a glistening moisture to it, uh, but that might be this style of peanut butter, but gosh, you, you kind of stumped me on that one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go with wet. I hope I'm right. A lot of times what you're doing in the kitchen is you're just sort of going with a gut feeling and hoping that it, uh, it goes okay, so. Uh, I, I do recall making this recipe before, and I'm pretty sure we included peanut butter 
in the wet ingredients. So we'll see how it goes. Um, it's, it is fluid because you can move it around similar to the way you can do water, I guess. Okay, um, so we've got our peanut butter in our, our wet bowl, so we're gonna add a cup of sugar, one cup of sugar. So now I'm starting to think that maybe this is considered dry. Okay, so for our purposes now, let's just call this dry, a dry bowl. And I'm gonna pour in one cup of sugar. And we're also supposed to put in uh, one cup of brown sugar. I don't have brown sugar, so we're gonna go ahead and put more of the regular sugar in there. And I think we have another issue here, and that's that the bowl that I chose was possibly too small. So I'm gonna use a different bowl and we're gonna transfer the items. Okay, no harm done there. Um, okay, and uh, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add two eggs. So, actually now that I think about it, I'm starting to think that this was probably wet ingredients. I might have screwed that part up. I, I, uh, I'm gonna look into it for you guys because I don't want to tell you how to do something wrong. But we're gonna add two eggs to this. Uh, I've gotten better at cracking eggs over the 13 years that I've been doing this. Not really 13, but I've been teaching it for 13, but I've only been doing it for about seven. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use our egg beater, which is gonna be a little tricky. Um, I'm gonna plug it in. If you don't have a fancy egg beater like this at home, uh, you might be able to just get away with doing it uh, by hand, but um, since this is more of a professional kind of thing, the way it works is you take one of these guys and you're going to put it into that if you're following at home. So this is actually a pretty amazing invention. You can do, shit, sorry, hold on. some reason this one's not staying in. Okay, I don't know. You know what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna literally do this by hand. And you know what? <laughs> I'm uh, this, I'm using a bigger bowl because that one wasn't big enough. I'm gonna use, sorry. Ah, this one's going a little more difficult uh, than I thought it was. But now I've got a nice big bowl here and I'm just gonna do it by hand. You know, a lot of times making cookies uh, reminds me of my youth hanging out with my grandmother and she used to tell me these wonderful stories about how when she was younger she was in jail and how she had to kick people's ass. Um, we grew up in New Jersey. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm trying to make it uh, as visible as possible. It's very unfortunate that, that the egg beater thing wasn't working because this is going to take a little bit longer but I'm gonna do the best I can. Already it's starting to get sort of a formation that looks a little bit like cookie dough. So that's, I'm excited about that part of it. Oh, okay. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good Mother's Day. 
Uh, I know for a lot of you it might be evening time, so I hope you had a good Mother's Day. Um, this looks pretty good, actually. So, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's pretty well stirred up. Um, now, we're going to start working with our dry ingredients. So, um, we're going to have two and a half cups of flour here. And I'm going to put this in this other bowl that we had here that we were using. Uh, you guys can hear me okay, I take it, huh? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do the best I can here. We want two and a half cups. I'm a little bit guesstimating on this, but uh, there you have it. Uh, next thing that we're going to want is, uh, sorry, um, we want one teaspoon of baking powder. So make sure that you're doing one teaspoon of baking powder and not one teaspoon of baking soda. It's a very common mistake. Uh, I just have to find my spoons. one teaspoon of baking powder and then the next ingredient here is going to be one teaspoon of baking soda so actually in this case uh, somebody asked what's the difference between baking soda and baking powder uh, well obviously you're aware that soda is carbonated. Um, you might have heard of, uh, you know, Coke and root beer and all those kind of things. Those are sodas, whereas powder is more of a fine crystal uh, gran granular thing. So, uh, but they are similar. It's a good question. There are no dumb questions. There's only dumb people, I guess is what they say. But uh, here you go. I don't know if you can see that okay, but we're going to stir this up pretty good. Uh, so far, so good here, guys. I can smell it, and it definitely smells like peanut butter in here. Um, okay, so we have a very, very tricky part coming up. Oh, finally, I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt. try to use this uh, piece of equipment again and I might have to take it back because uh, it's actually infuriating how poorly it works but uh, the professional way to do this would be to mix uh, to mix the wet and or the dry ingredients in with the wet ingredients by the way I, I think we can pretty much uh, answer that question at this point the peanut butter is the wet it's a wet ingredient. I should have known that earlier. Oh, that's saying that the uh, oven is there. Okay. Shit. I might just have to do it with one. Okay. The trick is that you want to do this at the same time that you're stirring it. Okay, I only have one uh, egg beater, unfortunately. Also, this is looking a lot more uh, 
dry than it's supposed to be. If that happens, you can always add more of the wet ingredients, either more peanut butter, more egg, maybe even some oil or something. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, this is a lot more difficult than I thought it was supposed to be. It's funny because I always thought of my grandmother as being kind of an idiot, but I think she was smarter than me. Because I can't seem to do this one bit. Okay. Um, this is going to take a little while, so maybe I'll just... Uh, talk to you guys a little bit. Um, I don't know if anybody out there uses this website called Craigslist uh, to purchase things, but um, if you do, just a little bit of advice about that. Try to make sure that when you do your transaction um, that you don't meet at anybody's house. You, you meet in a parking lot somewhere. It's just a lot safer for, to not to have that person know where you live. And bring something, I'm not saying bring a weapon, but bring something that you can use as a weapon, preferably something that doesn't look like you're paranoid, but if it's like a, you know, a spatula or a cutting knife or something. Uh, but try to make sure that there's no people around because you don't want people interrupting your business transaction. Okay. Well, I think this is looking pretty well stirred up here. And we are ready to move on to the next step, which is actually uh, going to be um, putting, uh, laying them out on a cookie sheet and getting them prepared to be in the oven. So well, we're going to take just a little break here. I'm going to wash my hands. Uh, maybe I'll use this opportunity to check in really quick with the, uh, the roast beef cam. Um, here uh, and you can see what he's up to okay um, Okay, so uh, yeah, we had a question about grilled asparagus. Uh, unfortunately, until I get better at Twitch and I start learning how um, to uh, manipulate some of the finer details of it, every episode is gonna say that I'm cooking grilled asparagus. Um, it's, I, I think it might be a flaw in the software that the company uses, um, but I don't know quite how to fix that. Uh, anybody who was here last week should know that this is not uh, grilled asparagus that I'm making here today. Um, but I'm going to sort of try to figure out that. Or if anybody in the comments section um, somebody said I'm getting old. Yes, this is absolutely true. Um, and we at Henry's Kitchen are working on that. We're trying to figure out how to combat uh, the inexorable march of time. Um, I will say that uh, one way to do that is by playing video games. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, play one round of the Henry's Kitchen game here. Okay, so the painting in the back, uh, I know it looks like it was directly painted for Henry's Kitchen because it fits the color scheme, but actually that is uh, something that I found at the Goodwill when I was thinking of ways that I could uh, decorate a little bit. Um, so I don't know how this is going to work. I don't want to get uh, feedback, but I want you to be able to hear the Henry's Kitchen game. So let's see here. Let's. Um, I gave the uh, the link last time in case you want to play it. I'm going to do it right now. Uh, again, in case anybody out there wants to play along, uh, there's some, been some incredible high scores on there. Somebody's got a uh, 
78, Bumble Vision, and then uh, I, I think I've got a 77, and then there's a new person with 77 too. But uh, okay, here we go. So I'm going to explain how it works as we go a little bit here. Um, let's see, a little bit here. Uh, okay, I don't know what that is. All right. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you can hear um, the game as I play it, but uh, I'm going to work on that as well. So in the beginning, you just want to make sandwiches. You want to gather up every ingredient that falls. That's going to be your bread, your peanut butter, and your jelly. Um, and you want to avoid, and if you get a peanut butter, a jelly, and a bread, that's one sandwich, and you can see on the top there it says that I've made four sandwiches so far, which is pretty good. Um, you want to avoid the spinning rats especially, but also onions. You don't want onions in your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And there's also some insects there that you want to avoid. Um, this part's going to take a lot of concentration, but, uh, but if you have any questions about it, I should be able to answer it as well. Um, We've got five sandwiches. Okay, so now at this point you can see that my bread and my peanut butter are really cooking, but I'm missing out on jelly. So I'm gonna start prioritizing jelly in my gameplay here. And this is all random. It's, uh, you know, just mostly peanut butter. But see now there's a jelly, got the jelly, got another one. But uh, let's hope that some more what do you guys think? Do you think I can get the 77 now? Or the 78? That would be amazing. Um, I don't think so. Oh, I, another thing is that at 30 you get a free life. Up there it says bad stuff and so far I haven't hit any of them. Boy, there's really not a whole lot of jelly. I'm already up to 25 peanut butters. Um, let's see here. Each game usually takes about four minutes. Oh, Bumble Vision is here. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to try. Let's see. Let's see if I get 78 right now. Um, I've only got 14 sandwiches. I, I need jelly in a huge way. There's just no getting around that statement. Um, You know, there's some theories that say that the game is rigged. Uh, the guy who made it is my friend Mark Cohen, and I don't think he would rig the game. That would be just incredibly cruel because then it would be just a big time waster for everybody. I'm pretty sure all these ingredients come out completely at random. Uh, but it really does feel like it's rigged against me right now because I, I just don't have any jelly, man. It's just all bread and peanut butter. Kind of like life sometimes. All right, uh, but I'm still doing okay. I've got zero bads. And um, I wish I had sound because the sound is really cool. You hear my voice saying things like peanut butter, nice, or bread, jelly, um, that kind of thing. But I guess I'm kind of saying it now anyway. So it's, there's the jelly. All right, I'm going to go on a jelly rampage. I'm going to just, every time I see jelly, I'm going to go out of my way to try to get it. There it is. Oh, see, but you got you got to watch out for that rat there. Uh, oh, I got a bad one, but watch this. On my next jelly, now I have 30 sandwiches, so I'm back to zero bad. But they're starting to come a lot faster. They're coming down a lot faster. Again, I'm shooting for 70 on this. I doubt I'm going to get that, but... My peanut butter's already pretty high up there, but this jelly, man. Oh, here we go. Sometimes you'll get like a flood of jelly all of a sudden. It's like your cup of jelly runneth over, which I think is a Shakespeare uh, quote. But man, this is this is tough. Okay, now it's now it's just getting ridiculous. I think we're going to be getting back to making peanut butter cookies really, really soon here. Um, 
but I am, I don't know, this is kind of going okay, oh, holy mackerel, okay, this is ridiculous, uh, if I can get 60, that means that I'm going to get another uh, free life, okay, now it's, this is just, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so that that was pretty difficult. Um, so I'm gonna enter my initials here. Henry, click to enter. So these high scores, yeah, Bumble is up to uh, 78. I got 77. Shebez is the other one who's really killing it. Too much Cherry, Peppa, and then it goes down from there. Shebez, God Gamer. So my stats, so I made uh, 56 sandwiches, but I could just never get that damned jelly. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we're gonna do here with our peanut butter, well, for one thing, I wanna put these eggs back in the fridge. Uh, but I'm gonna get my cookie sheet here. And uh, let's see here. I actually am not really a big gamer. Um, I know it's hard to believe after seeing me play there, but uh, uh, Call of Duty, I have not done. I used to play, uh, uh, I, I had Atari, so I used to play the uh, Asteroids, uh, the home game version on the Atari 2600, but I kind of got out of it after that. All right, so I'm gonna. You can see my cookie sheet's pretty dirty here, so I'm gonna lay down some aluminum foil, or I guess tin foil now is what they call it, which is more uh, politically correct, I guess. And um, I want to try to get this so that you can see it okay. Um, okay, so all right, basically what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be grabbing our uh, peanut butter uh, dough and I'm gonna start making cookies out of it. So here we go. Yeah, it, it I have this on, on auto, this camera, so uh, hopefully it'll sort of adjust. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking so far so good with our cookies here. Uh, I thought that this uh, cookie dough was going to be difficult to manipulate, but it's actually turning out pretty good. I don't know if anybody's dressing up for Mother's Day, but uh, I thought a cute um, dress up would be to dress up as Mother Goose for Mother's Day because that's a mother... Uh, sort of a play on words. Uh, yeah, this is a little clumpy, but we're gonna make do. They actually smell delicious. Um, I'm gonna probably return that uh, egg beater. Uh, we're sort of running out of room here a little bit, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with having too many peanut butter cookies, especially on a festive occasion such as this. Uh, I'll probably do three more. By the way, um, peanut butter cookies are great for if you're on the keto diet because they're very high in calories and very low in nutritional value. And um, that's pretty much what that uh, diet is, from what I understand. Um, which is fun. You can eat a lot of awesome cookies, but you will be dead by the time you're 50, I think. So that's why I never did that. Uh, okay. We're just about done here. 
if you're making these at home, uh, I'd like to see how they're coming out. Uh, hopefully you've got uh, a dough that's easily pliable and yet at the same time not too uh, moist. You want to give uh, a little bit of space to breathe in between each of your cookies here. That's sort of a common mistake um, because you want to have it uh, able to take in air while it's during the cooking process. Okay, so these are looking pretty good. I'm going to uh, do the final touch here before we put it in the oven and that's that I'm going to grab a fork. And, uh, um, there's a ritual that happens here that uh, nobody really does. Nobody really knows why they do this, but uh, you're going to take a fork and you're going to do a very particular um, insignia on each cookie where whereby you'll take the fork and and make a fork mark that way to flatten it a little bit so you can see it leaves the marks in there and then you're going to do it a crisscross this way okay so we're going to do that with each of these um, it's very little is known about why this part of it is uh, part of making peanut butter cookies. Um, there is a theory that I saw online that it was part of a satanic ritual in a uh, in a satanic church that they would make peanut butter cookies and the way that you would know it was theirs because they couldn't advertise it of course was that they would uh, put this unique insignia on it. Um, but that, that sounds like bullshit to me, so. But if anybody out there knows why they do it, please let us know, maybe in the comment section. Okay. These are coming out a little bit more crumbly than I like, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with crumbly cookies. Okay, well let's go ahead and put these now um, in the oven. So I'm putting them in at 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for about 20 minutes and it's not really what it says in the recipe um, but you know pretty much most of the uh, food that you're going to be making in the kitchen is going to be 400 degrees at 20 minutes or vice versa. So here we go. Oh, um, I have one issue that the, there's a bunch of stuff in my oven. I'm going to take it out now. Okay, so uh, we're going to leave that in there for 20 minutes. Um, let's see. Alexa, start timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Okay. And uh, meantime, um, last time I did a, a song for everybody, and I think that... Uh, I think that's probably a fine idea, something that we can do here. Hold on a sec. I'm going to wash my hands because I don't want to get uh, peanut butter stuff on my guitar. Um, first I want to know, can you guys hear this okay? Um, this is a newer song from Jose Suicidio, and it's, uh, it's called Mind Games. Um, I'm trying to remember the lyrics. Hold on. I had written them down, uh, 
first. Okay. First she's got a boyfriend, the next day she's engaged, then she says she's married. Girl, why are you playing these mind games? Head games, brain games, love games, mind twisters, brain benders. She's playing with my mind. I saw her on the street with another guy. Funny cause she told me she didn't want to be in a relationship Mind games, head games, brain games, love games Brain twisters, mind benders She's playing with my mind Why is she always playing with my mind? Okay, so, um, uh, I'm going to have uh, a little bit of preparation to do here. Um, so uh, I know that last time that I was uh, I was looking at some of the comments and people uh, were upset about me playing uh, other videos and I, I won't be doing that very much but sometimes it works as a nice transitional uh, thing. I mean I could always show you the roast beef cam but he's pretty much just always doing the same thing. So while I get everything ready uh, for pulling these things out of the oven uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit of my tapas video, and if you want to, maybe this could be a coffee break for you or something like that, but I'm going to be uh, dealing with a little bit of cleanup here, and um, you know, uh, it's going to be just, uh, just a couple minutes, so maybe in, in the meantime you can learn how to make uh, Henry's tapas here. Hi and welcome to Henry's Kitchen where today we're going to be making an authentic Spanish style tapas feast for one. If I were to tell you that you could have the magnificent flavor of the Mediterranean in your mouth tonight without getting on a plane, you'd probably say that was bullshit. But I'm going to show you that you're wrong because we're going to make it right here at Henry's Kitchen. Let's get started with our first dish. Salahornius Silenitas. We're going to start by boiling our carrot. Crush the garlic. One quarter teaspoon stoked pampica. Quarter teaspoon oregano. Now I'm going to combine that with one quarter of a cup of red wine vinegar. Okay, now we're ready for our carrot. Should be nice and tender here. It's very hot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up into coins. Be very careful not to hurt yourself. They say that a third of all deaths in the kitchen are from stabbings. Now let's just pour it all into our marinade mixture. We're going to leave our Xanahoria Selenitas in the refrigerator for four hours, which is perfect timing because that's about the time that we need to make the rest of the dishes. Let's get started with the next dish, pan con tomate, or tomatoes rubbed upon. You we'll start with one bread, and we're just going to cut it up into a square shape. You can use any kind of bread you want, I'm just using wheat. Okay, let's put it in our toaster here. We'll set it on mm, 
extra crispy. Leave that for a bit while we work on our tomato rub. I'm basically just taking a tomato and rubbing it up against a cheese grater. You know, in Greece they have a custom where when a young couple gets married, they plant an olive tree. And every time a year goes by that they don't have children, they cut one of the branches off. And when all the branches get cut off, the couple gets denounced from the family. So our toast should be ready. Up. So a little trick if your toast is too small is that there is a way that you can just kind of force it out. There we go. So I'll grab a slotted spoon here and I'm just going to start scooping out some of this tomato stuff onto our toast. Drizzle it with a little olive oil and voila! It's time to start working on our next dish. Cauliflower Rebozada. Okay, so we just want to cut one floret chunk out of this cauliflower head. This one should do. So I've got two bowls here, one with egg and one with breadcrumbs. I guess you could call it sort of a makeshift assembly line, if you will. But I'm just going to dip our floret chunk into each bowl. First the egg. and then the breadcrumbs. Now I've got a pan here on a medium heat with some vegetable oil in there. I'm just going to throw our floret chunk in there. Let it crisp up. And then I'm just going to set it on a paper towel lined plate to dry. The Europeans like stuff really crisp. No Mediterranean tapas feast is complete without brochettas de acutunas. Going to cut the cheese. So I'm going to put an olive on top of the cheese and then I'm going to poke the whole thing with a toothpick so that it stays erect. Add a little honey and top it off with some Spanish Marcona almonds. And now for the grand finale, Camarones al Aljilo. Let's start by frying up a little garlic with some olive oil and we're going to add one shrimp. I like to add some ground pepper and a couple slices of lemon. Now flip the shrimp over. This part's tricky. Now let's just add a quarter cup of red wine vinegar and we're going to cook it for two more minutes. Okay, let's just put this on a little dish here and our carrots should be ready. Let's start thinking about how we're going to make a nice presentation of our tapas. Good way to kill a Saturday night. Thanks to Joby for giving us this recipe idea. Hello? You guys have me again back here? Okay. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tapas video. Um, Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? Okay, so nine minutes. Let's just take a look. They seem to be coming out pretty good, uh, and they smell really good too. So, um, uh, I don't know. Does anybody want to hear another song? Oh, okay. I've got a request there for uh, "Holy Guacamole." Uh, let me grab the. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can with this one. It's got a lot of words. 
and it's normally uh, meant to be played on the piano. Can you guys hear the guitar okay? Uh, yeah? Okay. Here we go. Holy guacamole Holy guacamole I just got hit by a car And you're the one who set me off my feet Pushed me in the street Left me in a coma Making guacamole Sold me to the fed, leaving me for dead. How could you be so cool? Oh, guacamole me, guacamole you. I just got shot in the face. And you're the one who had the smoking gun. Love is just no fun whenever I'm. Wow, that was a tricky one. Uh, I'm not especially proud of that performance, but uh, I like to uh, I like to try to um, fulfill people's requests. Hold on, I'm gonna put this back. I think our cookies are just about done here. Uh, meantime, if anybody has any questions, uh... oh, thank you very much for not being too hard on myself. Um, the artistic process is always um, uh, kind of difficult. You know, it's it's uh, really easy for us to get uh, into a self-deprecating place, and uh, I've had. Um, years of going through a midlife crisis and nervous breakdown and stuff like that and um, this uh, live experience is very difficult as well so um, and by the way I'm still also going to be working on some of these other technical matters like apparently there's a, a way that I can have it so that if you ask a question it'll read it out to me and then there's also um, a bunch of other fun things like that too so do we have any questions Oh, okay. Um, so this is roast beef up here. Uh, let's uh, see if we can get a better angle on roast beef. Uh, this is when he dressed up for the 10 year anniversary. Um, most of the time uh, that I'm singing my songs and practicing my songs, it's literally just in front of my cat, roast beef. Uh, who's a very good audience member. Um, for a little while I had kittens because I thought maybe uh, they could bring in more views because uh, apparently uh, if you do a little bit of research the, the kitten um, is the highest um, uh, the most likely to increase your viewership on uh, social media. But it didn't really work, and so I'm, I just gave them back to the uh, shelter, and hopefully somebody will give them a good home. But uh, yeah, I have a very senior cat named Roast Beef, who's uh, he's he's very old and he sleeps all the time. Uh, he also drinks a lot of water. Uh, but uh, you know, he's he's still kicking, which is good. Um, Somebody asked, do I have any kids? No. No, I don't have any kids. I guess I'm not really fond of uh, kids. Let's see. Uh, no, I, that sounded awful. I mean, I, I, I don't dislike kids. I just sort of never really felt uh, like it was something that I wanted to pursue. That's a, that's a pretty personal one here, but uh, let's see. Uh, wow, it's going really fast. 
I'm seeing some good things. I saw something about somebody getting motivated, which is good. Alexa, uh, how much time left? Three minutes and 30 seconds. You know what? I think we could probably go ahead and just, uh, just do this. Uh, I'm just going to give it one more minute. Um, rumor that Highwayman uh, and Henry's Kitchen are the same person. Um, I guess that's not a bad theory. They could be uh, one uh, is acting like the other one. I don't know. Uh, dating advice. Uh, yes, uh, dating advice. Always cook uh, for the girl or guy uh, in uh, at your own home. Don't don't ever take your date out to a restaurant. It's just a bad idea. Uh, the worst thing that I've ever um, ordered at a restaurant. Um, I guess it would probably be a type of seafood. Um, Okay, I am a fan of uh, clam chowder, but you have to be very careful where you get it. Um, I got clam chowder at a hot dog stand one time, and it was... I took a couple of bites, and it didn't really taste like clam chowder. It was very fishy, though, and I started wondering if there's other types of uh, fish that you can use for it. Oh, and also, I will say... Um, I ordered fish and chips one time and you want to be careful with deep fried stuff because you can literally take anything and deep fry it and I had uh, I had fish and chips and the fish once I bit into it the batter tasted okay but the fish was really nasty and um, I'm not sure how that happens I mean I've had that happen in my own home when I'm cooking but certainly never when I'm out at a restaurant Okay, so uh, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, take these out of the oven here. Let's see how this goes. here hold on a sec uh, also looking at some comments here would I ever be a judge on Hell's Kitchen um, yeah if, if they wanted me to I mean I've been cooking probably longer than most of these people that you'll see on TV um, I mean literally I mean I've been doing it professionally obviously on YouTube for 10 years but uh, I would say probably more like 13 years if you add up all the time that I was learning how to do it by watching YouTube videos and stuff. Okay, so what we have here is a peanut butter cookie. This thing is very hot, so I want you to be careful at home. Um, one unfortunate thing has sort of happened, and that's that the cookies have sort of uh, melded to... In Alexa, stop timer. They've sort of melded into one cookie. Uh, and they also might be a little bit more cooked than I guess they could have been. But uh, that being said, these cookies are nothing to sneeze at. Unless you like sneezing on good food. Because that's pretty much what we got here. Um... Okay. If I were to describe this taste, well, I would probably say it's a little bit like a, like a crumpet. Um, but if you spread peanut butter on your crumpet, which some people do, I guess. There's definitely a lot of peanut butter in there. And... Um,
I'm also tasting a little bit of a burned uh, taste, which is nice. Um, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not something that I necessarily would um, sell if I had my own restaurant. But in terms of just making them on a, on a Sunday and uh, passing them out to the neighbors, or sometimes you can just put uh, a little piece of plastic over a plate like this and put it in front of the doorstep of uh, some of your neighbors. They'll be very confused, but, you know, a lot worse things that your neighbors can do than to put delicious peanut butter cookies on your doorstep. Um, there you go. I think uh, overall, this was a success. And uh, I hope that you guys had a success um, when you made your uh, cookies at home uh, whilst following along. So uh, once again, everybody, um, thanks, for, uh, thanks for helping me uh, work out some of the kinks uh, in my early uh, streaming um, journey and um, remember that cooking is never easy and it's never fun but if it were then they wouldn't call it cooking they would call it something else like uh, fun easy time or something like that anyway uh, I want to say a sincere thanks to everybody and uh, I, I do appreciate reading your comments and everything like that and uh, the one about me being old really did kind of throw me for a loop. Um, I do want to also address the fact that a lot of times when people discover my videos they don't realize that they're watching me uh, 11 years ago so uh, I hope it, it's not shocking to anybody. Um, but be good to each other and uh, enjoy your Mother's Day or I hope you did enjoy your Mother's Day and let's just all try to go out there and have a good week. And let's hope that, uh, um, oh, I also want to mention that the streaming schedule is on my page here. If you go to the schedule part of my channel, the next one I believe is going to be on, uh, well, I don't even know how to go to it, but I'm going to try to find, oh yeah, schedule. Yeah, it looks like Wednesday at 11 a.m. And it looks like I'll be making uh, grilled asparagus. So, yeah, I have to figure out how to change that. Um, but, again, a sincere thanks to everybody, and uh, I hope everybody has a great um, uh, Mother's Day. I already said that, but uh, I guess I'm running out of stuff. But uh, thanks, everybody, and I'll see you Wednesday, and I'll try to have a really good, challenging dish uh, for us. In the meantime, I'm going to try to uh, call the company that makes that shitty egg beater thing and we got to get rid of that and we got to get the money back for that thing because it's uh it's pretty stupid okay thanks everyone <laughs>